January 1st, the circumcision of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. On the eighth day following his birth, the divine child was presented in the temple and circumcised according to the law existing in Israel since the time of Abraham. On this occasion, he was given the name Jesus, which the archangel Gabriel had announced to the most holy virgin Mary. The Old Testament circumcision was the prefiguring of the New Testament baptism. The circumcision of our Lord shows that he truly received upon himself the body of man and not just seemingly as was later taught of him by heretics. Our Lord was also circumcised because he wanted to fulfill the entire law which he himself gave to the prophets and forefathers. In fulfilling the written law, he replaced it with baptism in his holy church, as was proclaimed by the Apostle Paul. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Galatians 6.15 In the liturgical calendar of the church, this feast of the Lord's circumcision has neither a forefeast nor an afterfeast. St. Basil the Great, Archbishop of Caesarea Basil was born during the reign of Emperor Constantine. While still unbaptized, he spent 15 years in Athens, where he studied philosophy, rhetoric, astronomy, and all the other secular sciences of that time. His colleagues there were Gregory the Theologian and Julian, later the apostate emperor. In his mature years, he was baptized in the Jordan River along with Ibelios, his former teacher. He was bishop of Caesarea in Cappadocia for almost ten years and completed his earthly life fifty years after his birth. He was a great defender of orthodoxy, a great light of plur moral purity, a religious zealot, a great theological mind, and a great builder and pillar of the Church of God. Basil deserved the title the Great in liturgical services. He is referred to as the Bee of the Church of Christ, which brings honey to the faithful and with its stinger pricks the heretics. Numerous works of this father of the church are preserved, and they include theological, apologetical, ascetical, and canonical writings, as well as the holy and divine liturgy named after him. The divine liturgy is celebrated ten times during the year. On the 1st of January, his feast day, on the eve of nativity of our Lord, on the eve of the Theophany of our Lord, on all Sundays of Great Lent, except Palm Sunday, on Great and Holy Thursday, and on Great and Holy Saturday, St. Basil reposed peacefully on January 1st, 379, and entered into the kingdom of Christ. Hymn of Praise, the Circumcision of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, St. Basil the Great. Thou who gavest the Lord to the word and world and to man, thou the lawgiver didst place thyself under the law. Others didst thou enjoin by imposition thyself voluntarily. That is why on the eighth day thou wast circumcised in the flesh, and fulfilling the law thou didst replace it with a new one. Circumcision of the flesh was replaced with a spiritual one, that we cut off from ourselves impure passions, and gaze upon thee with a pure spirit, that with the spirit we cut off and constrict the will of the body, and with the spirit fulfill thy will, O Saviour. The spirits taught this spiritual circumcision, and left to us their fiery example, wonderful basil like a ray of light, teaches such circumcision to all generations. To basil thy great servant be glory, he was great because he humbled and denied himself before thee. That is why he became great and remains the great. Reflection Why is it necessary to listen to the church and not to a man who thinks against the church, even though he might be called the greatest thinker? Because the church was founded by the Lord Jesus Christ and is guided by the inspiration of the Spirit of God. Because the church represents the realm of the holy, a grove of cultivated fruit trees. If someone rises up against the realm of the holy, it means that he is unholy. Why then listen to him? The church is an enclosure, says the all-wise John Chrysostom. 
If you are within, the wolf does not enter, but if you leave, the beasts will seize you. Do not distance yourself from the church. There is nothing mightier than the church. The church is your hope. The church is your salvation. The church is higher than the heavens. The church is harder than stone. The church is wider than the world. The church never grows old, but continuously renews itself. Contemplation. Contemplate the circumcision of the Lord Jesus Christ. His glory and the heavenly kingdom where cherubim serve him in fear and trembling. His lowliness and his humility in the ritual of circumcision which was intended for sinners. Contemplate my own heart. How much have I circumcised sinful thoughts, vices, and passions from it? Homily on how we should depart from evil and do good. Turn from evil and do good. Psalm 34.15 With these words are expressed all the efforts by which we should labor here on earth and in the earth, on this material earth and in this physical body. And what then should our labor consist? To achieve two habits. First, to avoid evil, and second, to do good. Concerning that which is good and that which is evil, our conscience tells us completely and unclearly, because our conscience is darkened by sin. But the teaching of Christ tells us completely and clearly that which is good and that which is evil. Brethren, what does our Lord ask of us? He asks that as our altars always face the east, so should our souls be turned toward good, that we leave evil behind us, leave evil in the shadows, leave evil in the abyss of oblivion, leave evil in the darkness of the past, that we, from year to year, from day to day, extend ourselves toward God, toward good, think about good, yearn for good, speak about good, do good. The Lord is seeking builders and not destroyers. He who builds good by the same act destroys evil. However, he who turns away from destroying evil quickly forgets how to build good and is transformed into an evildoer. The Apostle of Christ teaches us, Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Romans 12.9 Hate evil, but do not hate the man who commits evil, for he is sick. If you can, heal the sick person, but do not kill him with your hatred. Adhere to good and only good, for good is from God, and God is the treasury of all good. O good and all gracious Lord, teach us to avoid evil and do the good for thy sake of thy glory and for the sake of our salvation. To thee be glory and praise forever. Amen.